start with Jake Stringer. And the little known trigger clause in his, uh, on his contract uh, that gives him an extension for next year. Now, we all thought Jake Stringer was out of contract at Essendon this year. But after 23 games and 42 goals this season, he has automatically activated an extension to play on in 2025. But there is a bit of a twist here, Scotty. Yeah, now, Jay, explain this. So... We all heard he wants to. This yep. has been the whole narrative all year. He wants to. Essendon have balked at it. Yep. Now you're telling me he's already got one, which we didn't know. Yep. What does this mean in the yep. bigger picture? Yeah, so for Essendon, they are happy with the one-year extension as it is. As you say, we know that Jake Stringer wants a two-year extension to play on in 25 and 26. Now, the, the situation for Essendon is fascinating because they can either hold firm or essentially risk losing Jake Stringer to a premiership contender. Now, if you're Carlton, if you're Hawthorne, if you're Geelong, do you want to... 42 goal forward, that's only one less than Jamara Eugle Hagen next season. Do you ever throw at the stumps to try and pry, prize him out of Essendon to get him to a third club and have on his day one of the best forward match winners in the in the competition? It's a fascinating situation for Essendon. There is a situation here for Brad Scott, whether he wants to reshape the list, whether he wants to send a statement, whether he wants to change things up, potentially culturally as much as on the field. But if you're at Essendon, Barnsley, where would you stand on this? Well, if the ball's in Essendon's court, they have to pick it up and they have to run with it because they want to play finals next year. I hope they want to play finals next year, Jay. Uh, that final streak without a win is going to celebrate 21 years next year. They'll be having a nice cake for that. They need yep. to get into the top eight. And they're not going to get there if they lose potentially their best forward. He was just behind Kyle, just behind Kyle Langford for goals this year, just one behind him. And they have nobody really else. Well, Nate Caddy's, Nate Caddy's coming cool. through. Jay Gresham kicked 19 goals this year, didn't deliver in that aspect. And I think Jake Stringer is still a little bit underrated. If we have a look here, he's, he's sitting second on the Essendon tally. In terms of key position players this year, everybody else has kicked more goals, but guys that are smaller than that, only two guys have kicked more than him, Kyle Langford and Jake Waterman. Otherwise, it's all big guys on the top of the list. So Tyson Stengel is potentially going to be in the All-Australian team tomorrow night. Yeah. Jake Stringer's kicked as many goals as him. He's played a, a reasonably similar role. He plays up the field. And I think at times, he gets harshly marked, Jake Stringer. This is the most goals he's kicked in an Essendon season, and he's not the problem in terms of Essendon losing games. Is he a scapegoat, do you reckon? Absolutely. I mean, Jake, we know he's had his issues over the journey. He was at the Bulldogs, won a flag, much loved. Off-field, things went awry. He hasn't, he hasn't done anything wrong off-field for a few years. Physically, OK, we focus on him. It's is he fit enough? Mm. Yet, and then, yet during the year, he changed a few things off the field. Looked great in the first half of the year. Second half of the year, maybe not. There are other people, other problems here mm. that Brad Scott can move on. Jake Stringer, as Barnsley said, mm. Peter Wright. We haven't mentioned Peter Wright. Mm. He was their best goal kicker 12 months ago. Dropped to the twos. Now he's just a complete... Yeah. Disappearing so act. The so other than Nate Caddy, that cupboard, the key forward cupboard, well, is a little bit bare, isn't it? Kid needs help. And yeah. Jake Stringer won them games this year. We saw that. Two or three games, he lit it up. Mm. If I'm a premiership contender, I'd take Jake Stringer. But what about from an Essendon fan perspective? You saw him at the weekend. What he had, he had against Brisbane Lions, he had five possessions. I think he started each quarter on the bench or close enough to only 65% game time. He's 30 years old, Jake Stringer. I know you talk about his best, right? But is he in Essendon's? Premiership team. Like, he's 30 years old. Are you, is, is Brad Scott thinking, I need Jake Stringy, I need these pieces? Surely he's looking at the next generation and if he's got any sort of currency still left over at all, is now that time? Do you think Essendon, after 20 years without a finals win, is this the sort of jolt you think that they, they may need? Well, they're not going to win a premiership in the next two or three years, I don't think. Does anybody on this panel agree no. with that? Yeah, so I agree with that. Agree he, with that. he will be out of there either way, I think. But you need to play finals to win a premiership and I think to get rid of him, you're not going to be playing finals next year. The way their forward line is set up at the moment. You've got to protect Caddy. You can't put the kid out with Langford and that's it. But he didn't play in the start of the season because Correct. Jay Stringer was in. So if you if you said to Essendon fans, right, if Jay Stringer leaves, and that means you get 24 games into Nate Caddy uh, and maybe Nick Bryan rucks and Sam Draper can go uh, sort of forward and yeah, and, yeah, and, uh, and into the ruck. I don't know. I think there's a potential storyline here in a, in a potential shake-up here for Essendon around Jake Stringer. You've got news on a couple other bombers. You know, with yeah. trade weeks coming up. Yep. What's happening with them? He might not be the only departure because we can say tonight that Jaden Laverty, who's been an important backman over the past couple of years at Essendon, is attracting rival interest. So at the moment, he's contracted for one more season at Essendon and he's most certainly a required player at Tullamarine. But if you're Jaden Laverty, you know Essendon and coach Brad Scott, they love Zach Reid. If he's ever going to get right with his body, then he's coming in to play that second fiddle. 
It is a big if. Yeah. yeah, and you can't necessarily trust that. That's why you need Essendon need Laverdia's insurance. But from his perspective, he's looking at well, they got Ridley, they paid massive money for Mackay, was on 1.3 this year. Plus, they got Zach Reed coming in. If you're Jaden Laverdi, now do you have the leverage to go and test the market again? If you are a competitor, is he someone you'd be looking at? Definitely, and I think the market is open for key defensive help. Everybody's clamouring over Josh Battle at the moment. Outside of him, there's not many options on yep. the market, so yep. teams will be salivating. Ben on. Hobbs is the other one. We've talked a bit about the midfield logjam at S, and we know they've got Durham and Coldwell, uh, who's leapfrogged them, Zach Merritt, Darcy Parrish, Eliza Sardis needs uh, some games, some exposure next year. We'll set a fields in that midfield mix uh, as well. So what does the future hold for Ben Hobbs? Well, I, think in, uh, I know that preliminary inquiries have been made, particularly from Collingwood, so they're looking at that midfield depth. Yes, Pendlebury and Sidebottom, maybe one more year. They've got Dacos, Goey. They need a bigger body and almost another Taylor Adams because Tom Mitchell's future is in uh, some doubt with that foot issue. So is Ben Hobbs, who can't get a game at Essendon, used as the sub a little bit, a good option for Collingwood?